With the release of Season of Conquest Commanders into Season 3 of Rise of Kingdoms, the way you invest in Archer Commanders has completely shifted. Some Commanders have become completely irrelevant, while some have become much more relevant than they ever were. So today, I will be giving you the best investment order from the beginning of the game, the middle stages, and the late stages of the game. I will also give you the tips and tricks I use to form my account into a proper Archer main account, and how you can get major advantages over any player depending on whatever marches they are running, because my marches are a lot more capable than some other people's archer marches, and it's because of simple tricks and things that I chose to invest in. So if you are looking to be an archer main, especially if you're in the early game right now, you should definitely check out this video, and even if you're not and you just want to have a good archer pair, this video is still going to be extremely valuable for you. I think it's fair to start off in the extremely early game, and as for archer commanders, you've got really four options. Most players will not have access to commanders such as Mehmed or Julius Caesar at this point. If you are a whale, they are an option, so getting a Julius Caesar or a Mehmed will work good with any other commanders I'm about to mention, but that's really a whale thing. You're not going to have access to those commanders if you're a free-to-play in Season 1 or Season 2. As for the epic archer commanders, I think that the best first option for most players is get Kusunoki. He has the AoE, he shrugs off debuffs, he's really what you want in a field commander, Bar march speed, he's kind of lacking on the march speed, but for the most part, for an epic commander, he's quite tanky, like you were going to expect a fairly good trade from an epic Kusunoki, especially KVK1 and maybe even sometimes KVK2 if you're lucky, but I ran Kusunoki YSG until I reached Season of Conquest, so Kusunoki is definitely a fairly powerful commander, I got a lot of kills using him, 3 million kills actually, and you can definitely expect him to be quite an efficient commander. As for your second archer commander, I would go for Herman. He's also another commander that I use extensively, and he's going to trade fairly well if you play right. With Herman, you have to play a little bit more safe than Kusunoki because he's a little bit less tanky, though Herman does have some march speed to back himself up, which Kusunoki is definitely lacking in. If you can somehow max a Kira before you reach Season 3, then Kira is actually better than both of those commanders in my opinion. She's just got a more powerful AoE and she's just got higher skill damage and stats. She's once again lacking in march speed, but she's still going to be a slightly better commander than both Herman and Kusunoki. So she is the best option out of all the epic archers, though she will come a lot later. Imhotep is not a very good commander for the open field unless you're a whale or you're running more than three marches, so I would preferably say you skip him. So for the early game, just get the Herman or the Kusunoki and you'll be pretty good. And if you're doing KVK1, you have a few options. First of all, you can still stick with that Herman and Kusunoki and you just slap them together. They're going to do good. I used Herman and Kusunoki a little bit in KVK1 until I got my YSG and it worked fine. I mean, I didn't trade amazing, like I wasn't getting 1 to 10 trades, but I traded okay. My equipment was subpar as well, so if you have good equipment and you know what you're doing and you've got better technology than I did, you can surely expect this march to actually trade fairly okay. They synergize kind of well with Herman bringing the march speed and stats and a silence and then Kusunoki being the AoE and debuff dropper. So I think that it's a fairly good pair and definitely an option. If you're a whale, if you have an El Cid or a Thutmos, somehow you have Thutmos at a higher level, they did remove him from the dailies in KVK1 to my knowledge, you can run El Cid or Thutmos with a YSG. In YSG, there are two routes you could go here. So you could either get YSG in KVK1, which I think is still reasonable. You're in a lucky spot at the moment where YSG isn't completely useless. He still actually has a lot of value. My YSG still nets me a lot of total kills. So you can definitely expect your YSG to trade good up until Season of Conquest. So you're in a good position right now. If you're in KVK1, you can choose whether or not you get YSG. And I say it's not too bad if you do get YSG. If you're afraid to play low spender, it actually will not destroy your account or anything. I think that it may still be worth it to actually pick up a YSG if you know you're going to be an Archer main. Then you can put your YSG with any of the Epic Commanders. Or you can put YSG with a 5511 LC or a 5511 Thutmose, who will perform better. Also, if you have a Mehmed at this point, he's going to be really, really good with the YSG, especially at 5511. So 5511 Mehmed is actually a very, very good option as well. I personally would run a 5511 Mehmed in Season of Conquest, so in KVK1, it's going to do pretty damn good. As for the second route, and this route's the most simple route, you just save every single gold head you get ever and just use Epic Commanders until you reach Season 3. That's another option if you're really, really keen on getting someone like Azulang and Boudicca. That's an option. And then you just keep the Herman and the Kusunoki together until you reach Season 3. And then you drop them and get the new meta commanders. That's probably the more account setting up option. So if you do that, you're a very, very long-term thinker. You know that you're going to do better in Season 3. However, you're going to have a very rough time in Season 1 and 2. 
using only those two epic commanders and not having an Esong. As for season two, if you're an archer main who's going for the Esong, you get Esong, keep leveling him up, try and expertise him before the end of season two. Preferably, you want to expertise him around the middle of your season two KVK. Purchasing him in the daily special offer is probably your best value early game, so YSG, definitely a very good option there. And you just keep that YSG with whichever epic commander you choose, whichever one you prefer. If you like the Herman, go for the Herman. If you like the Kusunoki, go for the Kusunoki. Or once again, if you have a 5511 Elsid or 5511 Thutmose, put them together. Now you have access to commanders like Edward of Woodstock and Tamiris. And Edward of Woodstock especially is a whale commander because he's only going to be useful for really half a KVK. You get him like halfway through KVK2, if not towards the end. And then he's only useful rallies from that point on. Yes, he's a very good field commander, KVK2. Trash after that. You would not be using him in Season 3 or, I guess, Season of Conquest. Because he's going to get wrecked by any other Archer commander, basically, in existence. Any Cav commander. Most infantry commanders are going to kill an Edward of Woodstock. If you're a Mega Whale, though, Tamaris is a must-invest. I would grab her right away and put her with the YSG. I know it's not a complete optimal pairing, but it's going to work a little bit better than those epic commanders. And it's definitely going to beat out a 5511 Ilsid or a 5511 Thutmose. Also, Tamaris will bring you a lot of value, especially early Season 3 and early Season of Conquest if you're Whaling. Because I presume you're going to run up to even six marches, and she's your best option for the debuffs at that point. So I'd chuck her in there in that six march mutable if you're whaling. And she's really easy to get for the early game, especially since you can buy her in the daily bundles as well. And most whales at this point will have their YSG expertise. So Tamaris is definitely a good option in the dailies if you've already expertise the YSG and you are a whale. If not, I think just save your money and maybe only if you do want to commander from here. By the Mehmed because he is your best value second to YSG. Now along the way to improve your trades pre-season of conquest make sure you're running the Ottoman Empire in your KVKs or your KVKs. You can choose to switch to Germany in the off season to train more troops and get a bit more AP recovery that's certainly a fairly good option but Ottoman civilization improves your trades by up to 3,000 sev wounds not even joking so I would be running the civilization almost non-stop if you are going for an archer built account. Also ensure you've got some type of a city skin so if there is an event that comes around and you want to be an archer main Pick a city skin that's going to give you any archer stats. Whether that come at the cost of maybe even infantry health or anything like that, you have to get a city skin that preferably gives archer health or archer defense. Those are your two options, and I think they are going to be your best options. You can see I have an uh, archer city skin for basically, I think it's every single stat that you can get with archers. And one of the best city skins is right here, Easter Party, 5% health for the cost of 5% attack. And that's going to do really, really good for your account. You can get a defense skin, they're also going to benefit you, but also try and get the skin for a troop that you don't really use. So I don't use anything but archers, so this doesn't apply to me, but if you don't really use infantry, try get a city skin that gets rid of some infantry stats, because it's going to basically be a redundant reduction for an amazing buff, which is always something you should be trying to do. As for equipment at this point, by the time you've reached season three, you're going to start looking at the legendary equipment, and I wouldn't really be getting a full dragon breath set anymore. Three months ago, maybe even two months ago, I would have said, Full Dragon Breath set, easy answer, just max it, that's the best option. Currently for the Dragon Breath set, the best pieces you should get are the Dragon Breath Breastplate and the Dragon Breath Bow. Try and work your way to the Chassis of the Glorious Goddess, which are the leadership legs. They give you March Speed for Archers and Troop Health of 8%, much better than these Dragon Breath assets. And get the Gauntlets of the Glorious Goddess as well, giving you defense and giving you that set bonus, so a total of 9% defense there. And definitely beats out the 7.5% attack you would get on the Dragon Breath Gauntlets. Also, I would just stick with Epic Boots for the rest of the game for most players. I think they are just way too good to really be swapping at this point. Before, I would say you get the Dragon Breath one so you can finish your set and get yourself the extra 5% health. But for the most part, you don't really go for a full Dragon Breath set because the leadership set is giving you more health and more premium stats. So you just run those epic boots and you get basically the same amount of stats as the legendary boots, but I think it's like 1% lower, except you're getting health. So it's much more valuable and I would be running those boots pretty much till the end of the game. For the newer players as well, make sure you try and get these accessories. You try and get a, a silent trial and possibly a Delane's amulet, or at least a silent trial with a Call of the Loyal. So now that you've reached season three, there are another two ways you can go, but we'll start off with the two ways you've already gone. Either you've kept all epic commanders and you've just been saving your gold heads and this is going to pay off really well for you. So you don't have a YSG, that's fine. And here's what you do. You take Budokuto 5551 and you expertise Zulang. I'm sure really you'd have nearly enough gold heads to do this. And by the time your actual KVK starts, you should have enough gold heads. And Budokuto 5551 is because she gets around 90 to 95% of her value from just those skills alone. And then Zulang to expertise because his expertise gives him up to 4,500 extra damage factor, 
when you first initiate combat. So Zhu Lang is definitely the more valuable first expertise over your Boudicca. For most arch mains, especially if you're not lacking on equipment, don't ever expertise your Boudicca. You can just leave her at 5551. It's really not worth the extra 320 gold heads it's going to cost you to fully expertise her. If you are a pure arch main, however, that little extra percent of value is actually going to be quite useful to you since you are somewhat limited to which commanders you can pick, and it's a little bit more of a challenge running a only archer account. I don't recommend it, but for me, I personally enjoy it. For most players, though, you just keep that bit of crap 5551 and go for either another archer march or a different troop march. For the players who have Esong, what you do is you max Boudicca. You take her to 5551, probably 5551 if I had to say, and then you put her with the Esong who is hopefully expertise at this point. You probably want to expertise him by this point. And then you can just stick with that pair. That pair is going to last you quite a while. It's going to do pretty good. And eventually, you maybe get someone else to put your YSG with. For example, you go and get a Henry, and then you put your Boudicca with a Zulane. So you get Henry to 5511. He doesn't actually need to go really that much further than that. I would try max that fourth skill if I were you, but Henry is very, very field usable at 5511. I used him at 5511 for a whole entire KVK, and he got me like 2 million kills in that KVK, just at that skill level alone. And YSG is extremely valuable still, buffing that Henry. Henry's got the march speed, the defense, the tankiness that YSG needs, and they really synergize quite well. And then I would go and try and get the Zulang, and this is what I'd personally do. I'd put the Zulang actually behind your Henry, especially since if someone takes out your Boudicca, you've still got the Zulang debuff on the field to at least give you and your Murderball a little bit more of a punch. And then you have a Boudicca with a YSG. It's a very, very good combo. You've probably used it at this point. And it's going to trade amazingly. And the Zulang is going to just keep buffing your marches. He's going to be dealing the most skill damage. He's going to be extremely powerful and extremely valuable. So you put him with the Henry, who's the tanky, more march speed, intense option. And not many people like to hit Henry because, once again, he has revenge damage. He has tankiness. He's not an optimal commander to hit. Put him with the Zulang, and no one's going to really be taking out that Zulang as your first option. So he's going to sit there and just get amazing trades. Now, for you whales who got Tamiris, as I recommended... If you want to run her in your murder ball, there are a few options you can do. First of all, in the leadership, you can straight up just get a Honda. I mean, Honda primary is going to A. It's not going to be an amazing trade at the beginning, but later on, you could phase him into other marches, use him in different places, and use a Tamaris with different commanders. You could also run a Julius Caesar with Tamaris. I know that sounds weird, but he's got a lot of march speed and a lot of tankiness, so it's certainly an option. Now, the other option for whales, which is a little bit more quirky, you get Boudicca, you put her with YSG like you would do with any normal account, and then you get Henry because he's extremely tanky, like I said, doesn't really need this super fast rage cycle. While he does benefit from it, he doesn't need it. Put him with your Tamaris. My Henry usually would take around 10 turns to skill cycle if I'm not buffing his rage with stuff like a horn, and that means you're going to get at least 10 stacks of poison. If not, I think it's about 11 stacks of poison before Tamaris throws her active skill. So you can certainly expect Henry to be a fairly good commander for the beginning. Then after this, you purchase Ramses in the daily special offer and work on Zulang with all your gold heads. Put your Ramses with your Tamaris, and at that point, you'll be running a Boudicca with a YSG, Henry with a Zulang, and a Ramses with Tamaris. That is my current recommendation for all whales because it's going to leave you with three fairly solid archer marches. You could also just consider getting Artemisia and running her as a primary with your Tamaris, or you could run Artemisia with your Boudicca, and then you'd have to figure out a primary for your Tamaris. Possibly you put the Henry with the Tamiris again and use Zulang and YSG. That is another option. Though, remember, Zulang YSG is quite slow. As for an Archer main, what you do with your gems in Season of Conquest and even Season 3 is extremely important. At this point, I wouldn't be allocating many, if not any, gems to getting T5 units. They aren't going to change your game that much. Yes, the T5 technology does help you and it should be a priority, but it should come after what I'm about to mention. As for Wheel of Fortune, what I would do with the Wheel of Fortune is just unlock whichever commanders you want, and after that, only spin to the 10 spot. That's where you get the most value for your gems, and in early Season of Conquest and early Season 3 especially, you really need a lot of gems for other things, such as VIP 14, which I think is very essential. Try and push that VIP 14 as quick as you can. And then also, another thing that you definitely should be looking at is equipment. The best equipment event is definitely the dig event or the egg event. I'd say the egg event or the hollow edge treasure, I think is the actual name, is the best event for you. What you want to do for your main priority focus of equipment, make sure all your archer marchers are running some type of the dragon breath breastplate and possibly the dragon breath weapon. Also, make sure that most of your archer marchers are running as chassis of the glorious goddess and all of your archer marchers have to be running a talented flame treads. They are really good. Even just a base flame treads, if you don't have a talented one, is going to buff your marches significantly. So make sure you're running that on almost every march. At this point, most of your marches should have some form of an accessory on them. 
even if it's just a filler accessory such as the Call of the Loyal, make sure they have some type of accessory. Also, I'd be hoping that you're running at least two Archer Marchers with the Silent Trial. Try and get as many of these as you can and try and talent them if possible. As for the legendary accessories, I'd get actually the Horn of Fury first. Usually people say ring first, and that's only if you don't have a Zul Lang. But if you want to run Henry's Zul Lang, it needs that Horn of Fury. Otherwise, the rage cycle is a little bit too slow. With a Horn, though, you can knock it down to about eight turns before you throw an active skill, and that's a perfect number of turns. You throw the skill, you hit the opponents, and you get out. So Horn of Fury, really good option for those players who just reached Season 3. And then I'd get a Ring of Doom as a second one, and possibly for a third legendary accessory, a dagger is actually pretty good, or you go for another Horn of Fury and you put it on your Boudicca. That's another option. I also feel it's important to mention an alternative to Henry because he is quite a hard commander to access, being only in the Mightiest Governor. Get Nebuchadnezzar. If you can not get Henry at all, Nebuchadnezzar with a Zulang or Nebuchadnezzar with a YSG is going to do really good. Nebuchadnezzar is accessible in many ways. You can get him in Heart's Desire, Legendary Tavern. I think he might be in Orotark Tavern, but for the most part, Nebu is quite an easy commander to access. Just try and focus on getting him then if you can't get a Henry. Since museum relics are much harder to access nowadays, I think it's also important that I put a big emphasis on these. If you've got an expertise YSG, I would double relic him. His 20% defense is really nice. Plus the extra skill damage is going to give you a nice buff. This relic is definitely the best value if you've expertise your YSG. If you don't have a YSG though, then your best value are between two relics. A, if you have a pretty high level Julius Caesar, that is a pretty good option. Or B, if you're missing any of the secondaries I mentioned, maybe you've got a Henry but no YSG or no Zul Lang, then you maybe have a Mehmed at 5511 and you double relic Mehmed and that's going to be a fine pair. Mehmed works with pretty much any Archer Commander. He works with Ramses, Gilgamesh, Boudicca, Henry. You could name it, they'd probably work together, even Nebu. So Mehmed is definitely a very good secondary to a lot of the commanders I mentioned. But if you're not only running Archer Commanders, then Minamoto is also another relic I just think I'd mention because he is super good. And it's just such good value, I thought I'd mention it. Also, if you want to go really hard in on these daily special offers, you can actually run three very good marches, but you will need a Henry. Also, I forgot to mention Henry is available in the Orotark Tavern, which is another way to access him. If you're going in on the dailies, you get Artemisia, put it with your Boudicca. You run that Henry with a Zulang, like I mentioned, and then Nebu with a YSG. That's going to give you three very solid marches, very similar to what I run, except I use a Cyrus, who is also another option from the daily bundles. And you can run Cyrus with Boudicca, and that's going to also be very powerful. Now, if you want to look at the daily bundles for any other commanders or any other troops, I highly recommend checking out yesterday's video where I discuss everything to do with the daily bundles because they are quite important. They give you quite a big boost in the game. And if you want to pick the right commanders, you should definitely know which commanders are best for you at whichever stage you are in the game. Now, I do want to say I thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.